This use of play is brought to you by... Don't you deserve a little me time? Play catch up and binge watch full seasons of your favorite TV shows. Available on video on demand from Flow. Simply press the VOD button on your Flow remote. This is how we do TV. This is how we flow. This is the Barbados Today Evening News Update for Tuesday, January 19. Thank you for joining us. I am Mary Claire Williams. Our top story this evening, Barbados recorded an estimated 0.5% economic growth last year. That's according to Governor of the Central Bank, Dr. Delisle Worrell, this afternoon in his economic review of 2015. Dr. Worrell said the result was due mainly to strong performance in the tourism industry. There was a 13% increase in airlift from major source markets, an expansion in room stock, and refurbishment of aging hotel plants. The tourism outturn was the best on record since 2007, with activity in the sector rebounding to pre-crisis levels. Tourism receipts grew by an estimated 5%, with arrivals up by 14%, and all major markets recorded double-digit increases. Dr. Worrell noted that tourism was the only sector to record measurable growth. He stated there was an estimated 3% decline in construction and that was due largely to unexpected delays in the start of major infrastructure projects. The retail, business and other services sectors saw limited spillovers because there was no impetus from the foreign exchange sectors other than tourism. The average unemployment rate for 2015 was 11.8% compared with 12.3% in 2014. Labor costs are estimated to have risen by 1% per year since 2008, while there has been no perceptible increase in productivity. As a result, the large gap between unit labor costs and output per worker persists. Police are reporting an increase in criminal activity last year following a 14% drop in crime in 2014. Addressing the opening of a two-day crime symposium this morning, the acting police commissioner Tyrone Griffith did not give an exact figure, but he said the rate was an improvement over 2013. He said, however, the rise in crime can be attributed to gun-related violence. Here in Barbados, you see the continued negative impact of gun-related violence as noted by the loss of life and the use of firearms to commit other crimes. I am of the firm view that the response to this challenge cannot be driven solely by police intervention, but it is one that requires full public discussion, collaboration, and partic participation. I have always been of the view that the way forward on this matter cannot be advanced by persons shouting across the borders at each other. But but it's one that requires national structure and well directed intervention. Calls by government officials to end illegal dumping at Robinson Close in Stevens Hill appear to have fallen on deaf ears as the practice is continuing. And residents say they are concerned about the potential health risks. They were speaking during a visit of the area earlier today by the prospective Barbados Labour Party candidate for the constituency, Romel Marshall. One of the residents, Janice Ward, vented her frustration to Barbados today. We, the residents in here, we have written letters, we have brought it to the attention of the authorities, what the authorities have done, and what the authorities know they should do, they should do. We are getting no relief. People have gone over there, picked up all of the trash from in there. I'm going to take you and show you the pile of trash that is right next to my house, which they have taken out of the dump. I had to toss eight buckets of the sludge that somebody stashed behind my premises in the gully. I had to throw it away. Oh, that is giving rise to these stupid things that people are doing. Sports Minister Stephen Lashley has admitted there is a need for proper maintenance program of sporting facilities across the island. Lashley made the comments following a tour of several areas this morning. It came on the heels of media reports that several of those areas are in a dilapidated condition. It is a mammoth task. We have just about 103 or so, 106 playing fields across Barbados and over 70 uh, hard courts to be maintained. And of course it is the responsibility of the Sports Council to maintain them. We are in difficult economic times, but based on what I've seen, 
the work that is required um, is really a question of proper maintenance and ensuring that persons who are assigned in the sports council to do that work to pay attention to the detail. And therefore, I have to say that I have taken the message which has been certainly portrayed in those photographs and there will be an immediate response to ensure that the appropriate maintenance is done. In more sports this evening, Chris Gale has launched a scathing attack on his critics via social media one day after his last innings in the Big Bash League. Gale today hit back at former cricketers who criticized his behavior during a recent interview with journalist Mel McLaughlin. He asked her out for a date and told her, don't blush, baby. He was widely criticized and subsequently fined for his on-air comments. In an Instagram post a day after his innings, Gale thanked the Renegades and the Australian public for their support. But he had some strong words for certain players, saying, and I quote, I think a lot of past and present cricketers who smile in front of my face could have had their say in public when my so-called issue was going on, but you all don't have the balls to stand firm when it matters. On Monday, Gale equaled Yuvraj Singh's record for the fastest half century in T20 history. There's regional and international news after this short break. In news from the region, the Trinidad government issues a stern warning to energy companies. Use your oil fields or lose them. The energy minister says the country needs to boost its production and will be taking action against owners of idle oil fields. More in this TV6 report. The energy minister says let nothing go to waste. Idle resources will be returned to the state and retendered for exploration and or development purposes. Government has the right to take back idle acreage under the Petroleum Act, but it's never been done before in this country's history. The minister also laid down the law on petrogen for onshore production. She's instructed operators to find innovative and proven ways to maximize production, but do it by using low-cost strategies and technologies. Petrogen is vitally important to the national interest, and petrogen will not cannot and must not be allowed to fail. I have mandated the Board of Petrotrin to arrest the decline and aggressively pursue increased production. That can mean drilling 20 wells on land acreage, 3 wells in the Trinmar acreage in the southwest Soldado field and 32 wells by incremental production service contracts. With the major economic downturn, most oil companies are cutting back on exploration. BP and BHP Billigen are the only companies promising to drill new wells this year. We are all eagerly anticipating the commencement of BHP's Deepwater Exploration Program. And finally to Pakistan, where a young boy who cut off his own hand, believing he had committed blasphemy, says he does not regret doing so. The 15-year-old raised his hand by accident when a cleric asked worshippers who did not believe in the teachings of the Holy Prophet to identify themselves. The boy has also been praised for his action, but the cleric has been arrested under anti-terrorism laws. The details in this BBC report. It was hard to find the boy who chopped off his hand thinking he'd committed blasphemy. He's from a poor family in the Northeast. When I met Kesa, whose real name we have changed for his protection, he was obviously in pain, but still putting religion first. <laughs> The Imam asked those of us gathered in the mosque, whoever doesn't believe in the teachings of the Holy Prophet, raise your hand. So I did, but by mistake. Then I realized I was being accused of blasphemy. So I returned home, chopped off my hand, put it on a tray and showed it to the Imam. This is the mosque where cleric accused the boy of blasphemy. 
There were around 100 men in the mosque at that time who turned hostile towards the boy. The cleric now faces terrorism charges of incitement to violence. But Kesar is not giving in to self-pity. Why should I feel the pain or regret for cutting off the hand that was raised against the Holy Prophet? This machine is used to trim grass. The young boy put his hand under the blade of this machine and chopped his own hand in a single stroke. Not only he himself is proud of the act, the entire village is celebrating it. And that story takes us to the end of the news, but there's more on our website, www.barbadastoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, and like us on Facebook. We're on Izumi Media in bus terminals and screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You could also tune into Channel 101 on Flow TV or Mix 96.9 FM for more news and sports. I'm Marie Claire Williams. Good evening.